Today we're going to replace the wheel speed sensor on this 2016 Jeep Wrangler. Alright, first thing we're going to do is remove the wheel. That way we have access to it. Next we got to do is remove this caliper from here. Alright, using a flathead screwdriver we're going to put this right into the little slots here. And we're going to move the, the uh, caliper outwards. Alright, that didn't really work so I have to reach underneath the brake shoe itself. There it is, compressing that piston in. And the reason for that is so these brake pads will come loose from the actual rotor. All right, using a 21 millimeter socket, we're gonna loosen up the caliper bolts. It's holding the whole bracket together. There's two of them, one here and one down here. This might be in the way, so we might have to remove this from here and just tuck it over to the side. That way we can stick the bolt in there or the socket for the bolt. All right, and what I actually did was turn the steering wheel to the uh, left. So that way I have a lot more room here. I was not able to stick in the power tool here or the air tool. And now we'll loosen up the top one as well. Perfect. Get that out of there. Take the bottom one off, set that somewhere on the floor. Then we have this upper one, and we'll mount the bracket up here. All right, just like that. Might want to have it secured with something. I just have it balanced right in the middle. Now we'll remove our rotor. Careful if it's hot. This one is. Oh my god, that's hot. All right, then there's the bolt to remove the wheel speed sensor. All right, I'm be using a 532s with a quarter inch socket for a 3 8 ratchet that is pretty rusted over so we're gonna need some leverage and hopefully this should be the leverage we need oh dang it fit it perfect but it's too small it has like so much rust build there <laughs> hopefully I'm able to grab it I might have to hammer that in a little bit all right, I hammered that into place and like a layer of rust is coming off. <laughs> Damn, I had to hit it in with a hammer. So I am unsure what size that is. Uh, but this one seemed to do the trick. Oh, this one is a 316. And I was able to break this loose. Set the bolt to the side. Might need some needle nose to wiggle that back and forth out of there. All right, I tried some needle nose, did not work. I am using some pliers just to try to work it out. Might need to use a flathead as well. So far, I got it to rock back and forth. <laughs> no luck getting it out. <laughs> awesome, and I broke the sensor. Now we have to do an extraction. Awesome. And we'll undo it from everywhere it's latched into place. This little bracket right here. All right, so uh, I'm gonna spray some WD-40 on here. I turned my wheel the other way now. Lubricate it a little bit. I'm gonna try to put this wood screw in there and hopefully I'm able to pull it out with some pliers. If not, we're gonna have to drill it till it comes out. All right, and I am drilling in. Should be pretty good right there. Let's use some pliers. Let's see if we're able to get this sucker to come off. God um. <laughs> damn. <laughs> this is not wanting to come off. It is plastic. Let's see what happens if I uh, heat it up a little bit. And nope. Only part of it came out. All right, so it looks like we're gonna have to drill until we uh, drill no more. I'm gonna start small with a 1964, and then I'm gonna make my way up. Oh, stupid thing is just spinning there. See if we can pull it out. Nope. Oh my god, this is a headache, bro. There it is. <laughs> it came out. 
And there it is. There's the sensor. Stupid sensor. Gotta clean that sucker up now. All right, and I'm brushing up and downwards so I could try to get as much of that rust out of there without having to fall inside. Then I think I'm gonna blow this out with some air because I see some particles in there. Sweet. All right, and we'll use a trim tool removal to remove it from here. And from here, it's okay if we break them. The new ones come with a replacement. Just have to press those in now to get them out of the way. And there it is. We'll move this to the side. Pull it through. Move it from there. There's a zip tie here. We'll have to cut off. All right, now that we have it all loose, all right, and just grab, follow the wire. You can see the pits out there. Kind of tough, but just pull it off from the frame, and then we'll disconnect it from there. All right, so I have my hand in here, and on this side, you kind of see the sensor there wiggling back and forth. There is a safety tab on there with a flat head. I was able to get it from this side, and now I am trying to pinch it to release it. And there it is. Ah, that is how we remove the uh, wheel speed sensor on this 2016 Jeep Wrangler. Sweet. Thank you for watching. Make sure you stay tuned for the video of how to install the new one. This was kind of a bitch. Thank you for watching. <laughs> All right, I just made a video removing the wheel speed sensor on this 2016 Jeep Wrangler. Now we're going to install the replacement one. Here is the part number from AutoZone. First thing we're going to do is connect the sensor into the pigtail that is right back here. It's kind of hard to see because it is right there. All right, so let's plug that in. All right, I got it plugged in. Into, to be able to plug it in, I had to reach in from one side over here. And then with the other side right there, we got it there. We're gonna connect it into the metal itself of the truck. <sighs> we'll put these back into all the brackets that it goes onto, just like so. There's another one back here. We'll bring this around. All right, that one goes there. This one down in there. These go right here. There's another one back here as well. Set up two. All right, just like so down here. These go right there. And then uh, this loops all the way down into here. All right, close the loop down through there, off through here, and into this little service hole. Might have to bend this bracket up forward a little bit to be able to slide it in and fight it through all right and there it is and they also provided a new bolt this is a 13 16 bit and we'll thread that on and i got it to get in there nice and flush perfect perfect and perfect and start assembling everything back together all right let's get this nice and secured all right, next we'll put on the brake caliper back into place. I'm sorry, the brake rotor. <laughs> That's the caliper right there. Just like so, then we'll grab the caliper and we'll bring it down and slide it into place. All right, using a 21 millimeter socket, we'll secure both of the caliper bolts. And I disconnected that one just so we could get to this bolt right here. one's nice and secured again perfect we'll put this back into place next we'll put the wheel back on the car all right now let's start up the vehicle all right let's start up the car compress the brakes a couple of times so the caliper goes back out to the rotor sweet next what we're gonna have to do is clear that ABS light it's still on. 
the scanner has for ABS. And there it is, C1015, we'll erase that. Erase, and there it is. It is out, zero codes now, we're good to go. So, you will need an ABS scanner to be able to scan that code and clear it after you're complete. Otherwise, you will still have the ABS light and the traction control light on the car. Uh, I'm not too sure if it'll go on on its own, but with the scanner, you'll make it go away. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.